Hi, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show what to study for getting a best rank in the GPAT. For getting a best rank in the GPAT, the important thing is the selection of the subjects or topics for GPAT preparation. So here, let us see which subjects or topics you have to select and how the questions will appear in the GPAT and how to solve along with few examples. How to select topics for GPAT? One of the first criteria is you have to select a topic which is highly scoring. For example, subjects like pharmacology, pharmaceutical analysis, pharmaceutics, pharmacognosy, and even organic chemistry, all these are highly scoring in the GPAT and giving a good score in the GPAT. Second criteria is easy to study. You have to select a topic or subject which is easy to study and even easy to revise. For example, if you select medicinal chemistry and you are going to practice the IUPAC nomenclature as well as synthesis of the medicinal compounds, it takes a lot of time and you cannot spend that much time for a single subject where very few questions appear in the GPAT. So you have to select a topic which is easy to study and even easy to revise like subjects such as uh, pharmaceutics, pharmacognosy and pharmacology and pharmaceutical analysis which are very easy to study and highly scoring. And third and very important one is the logical concepts. You have to concentrate on the area where the logic is involved because GPAT is a competitive exam and you have to get a good score than your competitors for getting a better rank in the GPAT. So you have to concentrate on those subjects which give the logical questions and you can have a good score if you cast the logic and apply the concept in the GPAT and you can have a upper hand over your competitors. So important subjects for GPAT preparation include the first one, pharmacology. Here you will get the questions like drug category or classification, mechanism of action, drug adverse effects, drug interactions, and even clinical indications. And nowadays pharmacotherapy is also included in this pharmacology where you can get the questions like our drug therapy, what are the first line and second line drugs and how they should be used in the different clinical settings. So all these are included in the pharmacology and you can get a good score from the pharmacology. And second subject is the pharmaceutics. This is one of the very interesting subject which includes the so many concepts like industrial pharmacy, manufacturing pharmacy, dispensing pharmacy and even important one physical pharmacy. So you can get a plenty of questions. All these are direct questions from the pharmaceutics giving a good score in the GPAT. And the next subject pharmacognosy which is a highly scoring subject in the GPAT and many of the aspirants get the good score from the pharmacognosy because all these are very direct questions. So if you just practice all these questions from the pharmacognosy you can get a good score in the GPAT. And the next one is a pharmaceutical analysis. This is one of a logical subject which includes both direct as well as logical questions. Like spectral interpretation, all, all it gives you logical questions where you can get a good score over your competitors. And finally, organic chemistry. This is one of the subjects that is included recently a few years back in the GPAT syllabus and which is again giving a good score in the GPAT. So now let us see how the questions will appear in these subjects uh, along with few of the examples and how we can get the right answer in these questions. So let's start with the questions from pharmacology. The first question, an anticholine esterase which is useful in Alzheimer's disease is? The options are aricoline, donepezil, isoproteranol and Cleoquinol. So this is one of a direct question and if you know the classifications of the drugs or categories you can easily spot the right answer. Donepezil is one of the anticholinous rays which is acting centrally and used for the treatment of Alzheimer's disease. Let us see another question. Which one of the following anti-asthmatic drugs can cause convulsions and arrhythmia? Options are First one, prednisolone, salmetrol, 
Zephyrlucast and Theophylline. First of all, you see the first part in the question, anti-asthmatic drugs, whether all these are anti-asthmatic drugs or not. First of all, we have to check. Prednisolone is an anti-inflammatory agent and remaining drugs are bronchodilators. All these drugs are used in the asthma, so all these are anti-asthmatic drugs. So second part of the question is the drug producing convulsions and arrhythmia. So, if you observe among these options, theophylline is a CNS stimulant as well as C cardiovascular stimulant. So, if a drug is a CNS stimulant, it can produce convulsions and a cardiovascular stimulant, it can produce arrhythmia. So, theophylline is the right answer for this question. This is one of a logical question where you have to apply your concept in order to get the right answer. So if you catch the logic, you can get the right answer from this question and you can have a good score over your competitors. Now let us see if you have the questions from the analysis. Which of the following solvent is not used in NMR? Options are D2O, CHCl3, CCl4 and CDCl3. And everyone knows that the solvent should be selected in the NMR such that it should be devoid of protons, particularly when we use for the proton NMR, it may interfere with the study, so the solvent should not have any proton. So in these options, you can easily observe CHCl3 is having the proton and remaining are having either deuterium or not having proton, so they can be selected as solvents, but CHCl3 is not selected as a solvent in the NMR. This is again a direct question and every can, everyone can equally answer in such type of questions. Now let us see a logical question from the analysis. The integral ratio of the 1,1 dichloroethane is, the options are 1 is to 1, 2 is to 3, 1 is to 2 and 1 is to 3. First of all, let us see the structure of 1,1 dichloroethane. You can see that it is having two types of protons indicated by A and B. Now, the relative number of protons indicated as A and B are in the ratio of 1 is to 3. This ratio is called integral ratio. So, the right answer in this question is 1 is to 3. This is one of a logical question and if you know the concept, you can apply the logic and you can get the right answer for such type of questions. Now let us see a question from pharmacognosy. Colchicine is biogenetically derived from the options are tyrosine plus phenylalanine, tryptophan plus phenylalanine, ornithine plus tryptophan and ornithine plus phenylalanine. Colchicine is a one of a alkaloid that belongs to the isoquinoline category which is derived from the tyrosine plus phenylalanine. So the first one is the right answer. Again, this is a direct question and if you practice, anyone can get the right answer in such type of questions. Now let us see another question. Which of the following is more active? Distal is purpurea, distal is lenata, distal is thapsi and all are equal. So here two important uh, drugs distal is purpurea and distal is lenata distal is purpurea is having the purpurocytes which is uh, having a digitoxin as one of the important alkaloid distal is lenata are having lenatocytes which are having digitoxin along with the uh, disoxin it is also having more number of alkaloid content and extra disoxin. So it is, it is more active compared with the distalis purpurea. So B is the right answer. Now a question from organic chemistry. Which of the following isomer is more active? S minus naproxen or minus naproxen, S plus naproxen or plus naproxen. Naproxen is a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory agent which is highly stereoselective and the S isomer is more active which is a dextro isomer. So S plus naproxen is the right answer. So if you know a more 
concept on the naproxen, you can easily spot the S plus naproxen as the right answer. The same question was asked uh, for three times in the GPAT in a different way, but the concept is same. Let us see another question. An SNO one reaction proceeds with Walden inversion, complete resumization, inversion with partial resumization, and complete inversion. Walden inversion is nothing but a complete inversion, so both options A and D are equal. And complete inversion is shown by SN2 reaction. An SN1 reaction mainly shows inversion but with partial resumization. So C is the right answer. What are the other subjects to study? So subjects like biochemistry, inorganic chemistry, forensic pharmacy, microbiology, and biotechnology. All these subjects should not be neglected, but all these give a good score in the GPAD. At the same time, you should not spend more time for these minor subjects. So what is the final goal? The final goal is the what is the total score you are score you're getting in the GPAD. So you have your approach should be getting more positive score and getting less negative score. It can be done by selecting the best questions which you are confident and which will give the right score without going for the negative marking. Thank you for watching this video. All the best for your GPAT exam.